Well, good morning. We got a little bit of a problem, yeah? After 370,000 kilometres, the old girls packed in the clutch and we're in Normanton, uh, out back Queensland. It's a $60 part, it's a thrust bearing inside the clutch, but the major job to put it in. So I've just bought the parts and we have to make a mercy dash to McKinlay Hotel. And it's none other than the Walkabout Creek Crocodile Dundee Hotel that we visited in 2021. <sighs> Thank God we've made some friends in some high places. The publican there, wonderful Frank and Debbie, have agreed to uh, let us park up for a week and fix the clutch at their pub. Can you believe it? Where else do you fix an old motorhome clutch out in the outback except at Paul Hogan's pub? Right, let's make it a bit of fun. Lisa doesn't know it yet, it's 500 k's for us to get there to make a mercy dash to McKinlay. With a, our first rest area tonight, it's that bang bang rest area. I'll tell you something right now, our truck might be going bang 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 all the way to that, uh, to that pub. So we're going to get going and um, hope it hangs in there. It's done very well though, 370,000 k's is a marvellous effort. Attention crew. Uh-huh. Yes. We've got to go to the pub. At this hour? It's a bit early, isn't it? Not for the reasons you think. Right. Um, we've got to fix the clutch in the truck. It's, it's done the clutch. Can we even drive there? I think so. Right. Maybe. You're being a bit coy with us. Do we need to know more information? <laughs> it's spun a thrust bearing, so we're going to have to go to Walkabout Creek Hotel. Do you remember Frank and Debbie from the Walkabout Creek of Hotel? Of course you have to go there. <laughs> I have to go there. I've rang him. He's on board with it all. Okay. We're going to fix the clutch. I've ordered the parts. They're easy to get. They were cheap. But it's actually a big job. Right. Okay, no. Jess, that's where we've got to go. <clears throat> it's 500 k's away, but we've got no choice. Okay. <laughs> no one in these little dust bowl towns is going to be able to help us. So. Oh, we're lucky that we know someone That's in it. these regions, aren't we? Let's go and see Frank the Fixer. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here at Bang Bang, and here's something we like to do when we pull up at little secluded areas. He's going to get some firewood with the trusty Makita. Oh yeah, she's a uh, thick scrub here for sure. I can't look for all the dead stuff. Oh yeah, here's some that people have been hacking at. Oh yeah, some over here. It's been falling for a while. Oh, beautiful.
progress today on the way to the walkabout. Do you know what that means? On the way to the walkabout? Walkabout. You know, to go walkabout means? Go for a walk, go off into the bush, I don't know. It's an indigenous reference to when Aboriginals go walkabout, mm. they just go roaming, hunting, gathering, um, but for lengthy periods of time. 12, 18 months, I don't know. Not just for the day. That long. <laughs> yeah. So the reference in Crocodile Dundee, where Mick Dundee's in the, the, the Ratley old truck with Sue Charlton and Wally's in the back, the founder of Never Never Safari Tours. Never go out with them because if you do, you'll never come back. Anyway, there was a reference there where uh, Sue Charlton says, you ever been married? And he goes, I was once. But went away for a while and when I got back, she'd gone. And she went, oh, how long were you gone? And he goes, oh, a couple of months. And Wally in the back says, try 18. <laughs> and uh, Sue Charlton says, and she didn't wait. Strange girl, like being... <laughs> Being facetious, yeah. So that is a direct reference of going walkabout because Nick Dundee had been raised by tribal Aboriginals since he was a baby. He adapted Indigenous culture. So when he went walkabout for a couple of months, <laughs> he lost track. He had actually gone walkabout in the true Indigenous way and was gone 12, 18 months. Right. Yeah. Lost track of time, mate. There you go. So when you look at um, clever script writing, which is what Dundee really is. There's so much more in that movie uh, as I look at it now as an adult to when I saw it when I was 11. Anyway, a bit of useless trivia for you guys. I think I'm getting into the Dundee vibe on the way to fix my clutch. Getting into it all right. <laughs> Dundee, you're ever out of it. I drive her mad, eh, with films. <laughs> Australian Australian film and TV. There's nothing, nothing better on the planet than consuming Australian literature. Yep, love it. She rolled in the dirt. We're actually low on gas, so this is pretty good. <laughs> I didn't know you were filming. Oh, this is why I love life. What did you get, Chloe? A Chico roll. Do you know there's no chicken in Chico rolls? <laughs> it's, the, it's the great Australian... Mystery. It, it's the great Australian lie. Here we are, and welcome to Camp Winnie Auto Mechanical Repairs, right here at McKinlay Hotel. Uh, you can't party all the time, folks. We've received the parts in the mail. They come fairly quickly, actually, which I'm incredibly grateful for. So here's the new clutch kit. It was $281 delivered for the whole clutch kit. Can you believe it? Now that's cheap. And this is the heavy duty version of the clutch kit for the Isuzu NPR 200, which is what our uh, motorhome sits on. So we've got your clutch plate, pressure plate, clutch pressure plate, clutch plate, 
11 inch clutch, very nice. Truss bearing, this is the thing that's screaming its head off when you put your foot on the clutch. Pilot bearing for the back of the crankshaft. An alignment tool. So, it's already hot, it's 8.30 in the morning. I'm gonna have a crack. I'm on my own, so. Wish me luck. Now the first thing you do is, the thing in my jig is connected to the, what's it call it? And the gizmo, the gizmo is bolted to the thingamajig, but the thingamajig came off the, um, whatever that does, which I can't find, and, um, yeah, I think we're doing alright, I think, I have no instruction manual though. <sighs> What do you call a bloke lying underneath his car? Jack. <laughs> well, good news guys. Old clutch is out. Compared to the new clutch parts, and they're right. Nothing worse than having your motorhome pulled apart in outback Queensland and they've delivered the wrong parts. I was right, it was the thrust bearing. Here's the new one. Spins around, that's what operates your clutch. I, did, I wanted to show you properly, but it was so badly worn, it just fell to pieces as soon as I took it out of the, uh, the gearbox bell housing. So there it is, that's what was screaming its head off, the thrust bearing. So, old and new, but problems didn't end there. Old clutch plate, really, really badly worn compared to the new one. So look at the thinness on the old one. Didn't have a lot of meat left on the sandwich with that. So suffice to say, we barely got here on some hope and some luck and some good fortune. Then there's the pressure plate. There was also a very, very sad story to be told there. So uh, and you can see where the old bearing was rubbing against the, um, the pressure plate. Anyway, we're here. The parts are right. It's so hot, it's ridiculous. We're underneath this thing since 9am. And, uh, but all went relatively smoothly. Now, just got to reverse the process. So that, my schooner sculling subscribers, is how you fit a truck clutch to a truck in the car park of a pub. Now, I'm off to find Frank for a well-earned beer. Frank! Hey, Frank! Frank! I'm 
here with Frank, the publican of the Walkabout Creek Hotel. Mate, just spending time with you and Deb, uh, as I have done during our visits here to your pub, I must say, you are just a bloody good bloke. And it's not just because you own the most iconic pub in this country, but you are the quintessential hotel publican, a Toyota driving, she'll be right, mate. Do you want to be all round bloke? I think you sound <laughs> You're too so, kind. So, you've been here 10 years. I know you've done your time. You've done your tenure. Yeah, mate, we had a 10 year plan. Yep. And it's with a very, very heavy heart that the Crocodile Dundee Walkabout Creek Hotel is up for sale. So, mate, it's a very unique and a very rare opportunity. This is a one-off. If any Australian cinema icon needed to be preserved, it's the Walkabout Creek Hotel with all of its unique past. Some very well-known people have sat with you right here, Frank. Um, some Crocodile Dundee actors, Ernie Dingo, David Gulpill, is that how you pronounce his last name? Gulpalil. Gulpalil. Footy legend Alfie Langer. And also, most recently, Dick Smith. He spent some time singing a couple of ales, did he, in the bar? Uh, well, he was flying an airplane, so he wasn't actually drinking anything. But, well. he, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but he, but he was here and, and a very pleasant bloke to talk to, I've got to say. Yeah, oh, that's easy to believe. So, mate, I would love to see you hand the keys to the hotel that, uh, to somebody that would appreciate its history here. I can't believe you've secured the original Dundee truck. Um, it's the original Dundee truck used in Dundee 1 and 2. There was only ever one. And uh, you've got the movie props, um, behind the scenes equipment. You've even got the original bar, the set from the movie. Um, so I understand all this was generously donated by um, the late John Cornell's family. Yeah, mate, yeah, correct. And um, I just can't believe we just went for a ride in it. Now, for anyone that's a lover of Australian film, I don't know, this is like a Mad Max fan getting a ride in the one and only V8 Interceptor. Um, to me, going for a drive in mixed truck, I, I can't extend my sincere appreciation how much uh, that meant to my family and I. I've been a lover of this movie since it came out in 86. So thanks for that, mate. You're most, you're most welcome. <laughs> So, am I right in saying when the deal's done, the contract's signed, everything comes with the pub, including Dundee's truck? Absolutely, but we've never claimed to be the owners of this truck. It was gifted to us by the, from the Cornell family, and uh, so we are the custodians of this truck. And the, A temporary custodian, I like that. And yeah, and, uh, and, and, and the next um, buyer that comes along, or the next, you know, if you had a potential owner, We'll, or the next owner, sorry, will be the custodian of this truck, and it's it's not something that's for sale. It's not something that you can pass, no. sell it to somebody, you know, move your buff or whatever. It's part of the show, you know. I mean, it can't be anywhere else. To me, that's worth the price of admission alone, mate. <laughs> Securing the rights <laughs> to the truck. <laughs> so, uh, when it's all said and done, Frank, um, and I wish you well with all the best for your next your next chapter, your next adventure in your life. You and Deb, when you hang up the the beer boots. As, as they say, what's next for you guys? What are you doing? Well, I've got a hundred projects that I started a hundred years ago that I've got, I want to have a bit of a look at. We need to go go back to Billow. We're from Billow Wheeler and we'll probably regroup and then we'll um, ultimately want to do a bit of travel. Aha. Go to a couple of cabins. Man of my shows. heart right here. And uh, have, a, have a bit of a look around, drive around, listen to the wireless. That's the you want to see Australia? Absolutely, mate. Mate, you wouldn't yeah. have to convince me. Speaking of a pub purchase, you really know what it means to me, this pub, and how much I would love to be the next Frank, the publican. Unfortunately, mate, not this time. <laughs> yeah, well, I do know a bloke who uh, lives and breathes the Crocodile Dundee movies, and he would be the ideal man for the job. But, you know, like, yeah, you've got to convince family and stuff to be here. That, that, it, and it's a great location, it's a, it's a, it's a great business. Yeah. We had a bloke come in here the other day, actually, and he said, geez, if I was 30 years younger, I'd buy this business. And I said, so would I, mate. So would I. Well, that's what amazes me, Frank. For the average house price in Sydney, you can own all this. And this comes with your private residence, the caravan park, the pub, all the, um, all the movie props, the business, the, the whole shooting match. Oh, yeah, there's a bit going on here. Like People say, oh, what do you do in the off-season? Well... 
Yeah, there's always something to do, and uh, we got to monitor the temperature of the cold room and all that sort of stuff. Like, you know, that doesn't, can't be taken lightly. Keep the showers hot and the beers cold. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly right, mate. I love it. Well, mate, to top it off, you do have the most infectious laugh I have ever heard. And <laughs> it's just a shame that you, Frank, don't come with the pub. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. I, I, I don't know whether Deb would like that too much. Not that she likes me too much either, but I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> All the best here, mate. Good on you, mate. Good on you, pal. It's been a bloody pleasure. Let's go and have a beer. It's Good too hot. <laughs> One for me, mate. One for your mate, you mad bugger. Ha ha ha.